Hello, my name is Caitlin Krinsky, and today I will be talking about another case where a person has been wrongfully convicted once again. Today I will be talking about Lena Baker, an African-American maid who was killed at the age of 44. This happened in Georgia. This story is very important for the public to hear as she was the only woman in Georgia to be executed by electrocution at the time. The reason for her killing was because she shot a white man who had kidnapped and assaulted her. The white man that she shot had her convicted for capital murder in Cuthbert, Georgia in the time period of 1945. This case is so important to society because it shows how yet another woman of color has been wrongfully convicted for standing up for herself by having a white jury convict her once again. This shows how society is very racist and there is lots of systemic racism within the court system and justice system. Not only is Lena an African American, she is also a woman. This makes the case even worse because this case is basically taking away all female rights to stand up for themselves when they feel they are not able to put themselves forth in society. This case is also super important because it was the first case where a woman had been executed by electrocution. Electrocution is such a painful and terrible way to die. This is terrible that Lena had to die for standing up for herself. Another awful thing is that this was only a one day trial. This meant that there was not lots of conversating and listening to what happened at all in this story. Thank you so much for listening and I hope cases like this don't come up again and that Lena Baker gets justice from the public, even though she has been killed, we do not want this to be stopped talking about. We want the public to know, and we want to raise awareness for Lena Baker. To hear more about Lena Baker's story, I really recommend you all to look into the Innocence Project's website, where there's a section on Lena Baker, and also to look at staradvocates.blog. This blog page talks about Lena Baker and has a really important hashtag that really resonates with her story. That is hashtag lift every voice, Lena Baker. And this blog talks about sexual trauma awareness and response and how important it is truly to lift every voice. And sadly, Lena Baker's voice was not heard. And these are reasons why we need the public to raise awareness for sexual assault and for racism that is going on within our country. So I will be covering the case of Crystal Kaiser, who is currently facing charges for murder. Um, she has confessed to shooting Randy Volar, a 34-year-old man in Wisconsin in 2018, um, due to him sex trafficking her and also sexually assaulting her. So if anyone's familiar with Sintoya Brown's case, this case will sound unfortunately and eerily similar. So Kaiser was 16 years old when she first met Voler, who responded to her ad on Backpage.com, which um, was recently shut down for facilitating sex trafficking. So in need of money and supplies, she began seeing Voler. He allegedly paid her for sex and actually began trafficking her to other men as well. So although she said in her um, original ad that she was 19, Kaiser actually knew that Voler was aware of her real age, 16, um, because she uh, informed him of her 17th birthday and he invited her to his home to celebrate. Um, it's also known that Kaiser was not the only, only young girl that Voler sexually abused. In February of 2018, Voler was actually arrested on charges of child sexual assault after a 15 year old girl called 911 saying he'd given her drugs and was going to kill her. So upon searching Voler's home due to that phone call, they actually found that Voler was sexually abusing about 12 minors, which included hundreds of child sexual abuse videos and more than 20 videos of Voler specifically with underage black girls. 
Um, despite this evidence, Voller was actually released the same day, even though he was in possession of child pornography and there was clear evidence of sexual abuse. So as Kaiser got older, she said she attempted to stop seeing Voller um, because she actually had a boyfriend of her own and didn't feel right about keeping the contact going with Voller. However, when she told him this, he supposedly threatened to kill her, um, but she did not report this threat to the police because she didn't believe they would help her. So in Kaiser's case, her lawyers are attempting to use the affirmative defense, which is a legal term that means people who act as a result of sex trafficking um, can be acquitted because they are reacting out of trauma and self-defense rather than um, intent to, to cause harm. So at the time this crime was committed, Kaiser was 17 years old, still underage, still being abused and trafficked by Volar in Kenosha, Wisconsin. She has been awaiting trial for two years and she's received a lot of attention due to activists and supporters saying she acted in self-defense, um, which is also the position that our channel takes in this case. Um, and we do believe that affirmative de defense should be used for her case. As of now, the most recent update I could find was from summer of 2020, where Kaiser was actually able to be released on bond. Um, mostly due to the work of the Crystal Kaiser Defense Committee and a few other organizations who are working hard for Crystal um, to ensure that hopefully she doesn't end up in prison for what occurred and for her defending herself against sex trafficking. At the end of the day, um, it is unfortunate that events played out as they did. However, it's important to remember that Kaiser is, is a victim in this story. She was being abused underage, statutory, statutory rape was occurring. Um, she was very vulnerable and very easily uh, misled by Voller who, who took advantage of her and, and several other young girls. So in both Crystal and Centoya Brown's case, we see this common thread of black girls being victimized in the sex trafficking industry and sexually assaulted. So this brings up a, an important larger systemic issue of why do we as a society view young black girls at, often as older than they are, more mature than they are, and we, we tend to over-sexualize them. You see it a lot in the media and these harmful, harmful stereotypes placed upon black girls do contribute to the amount of black girls who have been victimized. And we really see a, a grave failing of our criminal justice system in protecting these black girls. Often their cases are not given enough attention um, their abusers are not put away, just as Volar wasn't for several years before his, his death. So we really need to recognize how is our criminal justice system treating black girls and how can we fix it? What can we do to, to stop this treatment, this unfair and unjust treatment by a system that is meant to serve and protect. So I am going to link in the description of this video different um, organizations that support Crystal, petitions for her release, as well as a um, fund that you can donate to to directly support Crystal. I really hope that viewers of this video and our channel in general um, are starting to see the patterns of racism that are so evident in our criminal justice system and either it's response to cases or it's lack of response to cases.